Hey y'all, movie retrospective time. So this movie right here won the poll overwhelmingly. And I have to say, I'm actually shocked that we hadn't done this one. I thought we did do it. I thought we had done this one, and but then when I went back and looked at our back catalog, I couldn't find it. Now we have done a lot of David Cronenberg movies, okay? We did Videodrome, we did Shivers, yeah. Dead Zone, uh, Dead Ringers. Yeah. Did we do The Brood? I th yeah, I think, we, I think we met it in the brood. So we've done like a lot of David Cronenberg movies, but for whatever reason, we've never got around to his kind of his most popular, his most financially successful movie, The Fly from 1986. I always forget that this is a Cronenberg flick. Maybe because I'm I don't know because I guess Cronenberg is so much seen as more like indie shit. It, yeah, like you know artistic yeah. right. horror movies and stuff like that. So they don't usually get this is weird because this is like the kind of movie that it's kind of rare because it's one that was really, really popular like with audiences. And I feel like it was really popular with audiences even that didn't really, that yeah. weren't really into horror movies, even though this is like disgustingly like extreme. Like a lot of the gore and like the effect, practical effects in it are really, really gross. I remember when this came out, everybody liked it. It was a big hit. And yeah. it was like, I didn't. I never really think of it as a Cronenberg flick because it was just so mainstream. It was kind of like um, it was kind of like uh, Jurassic Park or something. That's that, it was that size of a movie, and usually you know horror movie with body horror, Cronenberg type shit. It never gets that big. But this yeah. movie was huge. Which is huge. just kind of a credit to how yeah. how brilliant a film this is and how everything kind of yeah. came together. And it had Jeff in it. Jeff Goldblum, yeah. Yeah, he was saucing too. You could tell. <laughs> All that definition. I know he was on the sauce. He looked good though. He looked good in the movie. Well, they yeah. kind of had, uh, you know, they kind of had him bulk up yeah. after he went through the telepod because yeah. they, uh, wanted, they, they him wanted him to more. look like, yeah. yeah, like he was getting like more primal because he's like turning into a fire yeah. or whatever. It's like he went on a cycle. I feel so much better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for a little, great. for a little while, and then he's like, "Oh shit, my ears are falling off." <laughs> you know, not not so good. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah. So uh, I, I'm imagining most people know. I kind of feel like this is uh, one of the movies that's brought up whenever he talks about oh remakes that were actually good. Um, you know, this and the thing. But I don't know. I don't know if I would technically call this a remake because a lot of differences well okay well for one thing the original movie which came out in 1958 which was also called the fly obviously was based on a short story uh from 1957 by george langelin that was in playboy magazine and the original movie which is fun uh but you know it's kind of like that campy late 50s kind of sci-fi um you know and today it's kind of like you'd watch and it just kind of be like funny because you know it's a dude with a fly head yeah it's, that, it's like it's like an episode of outer limits yeah it's something like yeah. that which like i said it's it's i like that movie i enjoy it and actually like the last scene with like the fly with the little human head yeah, getting eaten me. by the spider that's yeah. pretty fucked yeah, up yeah. i mean because i can imagine like what would that be like like if that happened to you that'd be horrifying so it's like you know what i mean so so it's still a good movie but the one that they made in the 80s was completely kind of rewritten i mean because what happened was i guess 20th century fox they own the rights to the story. They own the rights to the original one. So in the 80s, they were kind of kicking around. You know, it's you guys remember, like, from the if you grew up in the 80s, there was kind of like a thing where they were taking sort of like 50s movies and, like, remaking them. Like I said, like The Thing, The Blob, stuff like that. And, like, making them more kind of, like, high concept, gory, or that kind of stuff. So The Fly was one that they really wanted to remake because it was their property. Now, initially... Um, it kind of went back and forth. They had a guy named, I think his name was David Edward Pogue or Chris Edward Pogue or something like that. And he wrote the initial screenplay, um, which was much more based on the story. Like the, you know, the people, the couple at the center were already husband and wife, um, stuff like that. But he actually did come up with the idea of it being a gradual transformation. Whereas in the original movie, and I think in the original story, um, he basically instant. comes out of the telepod yeah. with a fly hand and a fly head. Yeah, but you don't know. You see it later. It yeah, because he like, like tries to hide it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the original screenplay, like I said, did introduce the idea of a of a gradual transformation rather than a sudden one. Now, they wanted, I guess, Mel Brooks was also a producer on this, which uh, a lot of people don't know. Uh, it's, fun it's funny that you're, you, you, you actually draw parallels between this and, and 
the thing. Yeah. And I didn't realize it, but yeah, this is Carpenter and Mick and Cronenberg were friends, and this is they they you know they did they played off of one another a lot, mentioned each other in the in the in the movies. Like they'll sneak the fucking word Cronenberg and or give someone a last name. It's, yeah, yeah, and um, I can see it now. I didn't realize it, but yeah, this is Cronenberg's version of the thing. Yeah, because like his response to fucking Carpenter's the thing. Yeah, because the thing was yeah. also kind of like a loose remake. Yeah. Not really a remake, but a reimagining. I don't, like I don't like it quite as much, but it is a, a, at that same level. It is at that same, same oh, level. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. I said, I don't know if it's my favorite Cronenberg movie because yeah. he's made so many awesome ones. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, this one is amazing. It's and good. like I said, yeah. it you know, the fact that it was so commercially successful yeah. and it's like a really graphic, gross, like horror movie. You know, in the same way the thing was, but the thing wasn't financially successful. Makes me want to see the Blob again now. The new, the the, the remake of the Blob. I've been wanting to rewatch that for a long time because I remember that that came I in eight, like eighty eight. I remember that yeah. being kick ass. Yeah. Like it was really, really like the effects were really good. The Mars attack, not Mars attacks. The fucking the Mar one of the Martians and the kid. His parents yeah, yeah, taken yeah. by the Martians. I remember I know. liking that, that I, one too. Isn't that the Toby Hooper one? I think so. And that was another '50s remake from around this time. Yeah, before, like I said, before. it was kind of like a trend, yeah. like a mini trend that was going on at the time. Invaders from Mars. That's what it was called. Yeah. Yeah. So originally, I think Mel Brooks, who I said was one of the producers on this, like I said, not a lot of people know that he was also a producer on David Lynch's Elephant Man. Uh, in case you guys didn't know that, which we mentioned on our review of it a while back. But um, he wanted Cronenberg, but at the time that they were asking him about it, he was actually working, Cronenberg was actually working with Dino De Laurentiis on Total Recall, because he was the original director for that, which now that I know that, I'm just kind of like, now I wanted to see, now I want to go back like in another timeline and see David Cronenberg's Total Recall, because that would have been like kick-ass. But, uh, but yeah, so... Uh, so the so that kind of like fell through. So he so Mel Brooks was going to get another director, but then uh, Cronenberg the shit with uh, Total Recall didn't work out. They brought in Paul Verhoeven or whoever it was that directed it, and so David Cronenberg came on. But he said, "Well, I'll direct this movie because, like I said, I don't know if you guys know, but I th I'm pretty sure that David Cronenberg started out as like an entomologist. I didn't know that, right? So or he you know studied it or something like that." So this was like something that, uh, that a project that he was really interested in doing. But he said, well, I'll come on and direct it if you let me like rewrite the script. Because he liked the, some things about the script, but some things he wanted to change. Um, so he did actually like change a bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, he made it, they, the, you know, the, the scientist and the woman weren't husband and wife already. They had just like met and stuff like that. So because he thought that that would be more, he wanted to bring more... Uh, sexual dynamics into it, you know what I mean? Because well, it was uh, boring the original one. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. You had to have more for the fly to do to do. Yeah. Brendel Fly had to be able to do all kinds of shit and you needed more people in the story. Yeah, and he you said a couple too women and you needed Yeah, dudes. and he said and he said too that he wanted um that he wanted Brundle yeah. to be more articulate until later into the movie. Because, like, in the original movie, like, he has the fly head and he can't really talk all that much. And then the original script for this one, um, he kind of, like, loses his ability to speak, like, about two-thirds of the way through. Um, and David Cronenberg said, no, he wanted more, like, emotional resonance. So he's like, for that, we're going to have right. to be able to, like, hear him speak, like, until the last possible moment. It's much better than the original. It's, oh yeah, it's a good movie. You know, and you got to hand it to Cronenberg; he did just pull this script out. You're talking about this wasn't the script from the original movie; just a very, very basic concept. Yeah, he I made mean, a good script about it. Yeah, I mean the thing about it, and like when the when the movie came out, and like I saw this in the credits when we were watching it last night. It's on Hulu, by the way, if you want to watch it. Um, is that he insisted on his name? being underneath the other screenwriter because he's like even though they use most of his ideas he's like well that guy's script he was kind of like the foundation okay. of it and he's like so i just changed some things so he said well that guy should get top credit well, there you go yeah. so uh so yeah because he was the one that and he was the one that came up with the transformation aspect uh yeah, and speak, stuff like that speaking of the um the 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 effects are good the practical effects are real good especially for the time i mean the guy that yeah. worked on this chris wallace he had previously done Gremlins, um, and he worked on Raiders of the Lost Ark, 
and like some other so he was like kind of a big you know guy like you know effects guy this movie only cost nine million dollars to make damn as soon as i found that out today because we just watched it like last yeah. night and i was like holy fucking crap like all of those practical effects it was all puppetry and all that kind yeah. of stuff they pulled that off with nine million dollars and then the movie made 60 million which like i said was like a big i mean yeah, for yeah. for a graphic horror movie yeah. that's like pretty wow. that's pretty awesome they also came up with some nifty ideas you know what i mean the the, the fly being just kind of blended in with him at a genetic level you know what i mean and, and and so he just had fly dna now and then later on he gets blended with the damn door of fucking pod c that was a weird group effect yeah i had forgotten about that because yeah. i've seen the damn door was open so yeah. it fucked it, it, so the machine's like idea. oh you want to fuse that with that yeah, okay yeah yeah so, so <laughs> Fair enough. That, that's a good idea so you know they're they're pulling out they're, they're pulling the, the, these ideas out it's, it's good good they're thinking outside the box yeah like what would happen if the door was open oh yeah but me and jane were thinking well what would happen if the damn hair from the damn monkeys that he was teleporting what if that was still in there well i was yeah. wa and i was watching another video earlier today that said well what about all the like microbes, microbes and stuff just, that would be right. in there it's like well you can't think yeah. about it too much it's just sci-fi yeah, you know what yeah. i mean it's like yeah, you know, it's just it's a, it's a story well, i was saying it was what happens if somebody left fingerprints behind and they're sweat and shit you know so it's yeah, just, you'd that would just be the limitation. That would be a limitation of the technology. You'd have to be totally fucking sanitized. It, yeah, it would have to be like completely sterilized yeah. every time you used it. Yeah. Because yeah, like I said, what if you <laughs> like a, the that baboon had like left a hair in there and then that, he like fuses with a baboon? And the other thing is, is that your body's filled with fucking uh, fucking symbiotes and parasites. Yeah, that's what this person was pointing out. And they're, in there they're, they're like, yeah, would, it's like why wouldn't he have become like E. coli man yeah, or something e. coli, like that? Yeah. <laughs> I guess the, I guess the computer was able to keep track of all that. Yeah, that's kind of what that's kind of like yeah. the the thing that people hand wave away. They're like, yeah. well, he he was smart enough to know that, yeah. um, you know, that he had accounted for that, like yeah. in his programming, but right. it, he hadn't accounted for another thing being in there with him. Yeah, which that's okay. That's fair enough. Like I said, it's sci-fi. You can't think about it too hard, um, because it'll be like it starts falling apart. It'll sure. like plot holes everywhere. Yeah. But yeah, but I was going to say that, um, yeah, there, there's special effects in this. Like I said, they still look amazing. Um, it's kind of like, there's actually a couple of sequences in, that were originally in here that were taken out. And I've, because uh, test audiences did not respond well to them. What was taken out? Okay, so this one scene, and this is before, like, uh, Jeff Goldblum, Seth Brundle, has gone all the way into fly mode, and he's experimenting with, he's doing his genetic splicing, you know what I mean? Because, you know, as, as yeah. toward the end, like, him and, uh, he wants uh, Veronica, his girlfriend, played by Gina Davis, because uh, she's pregnant with his baby, he wants to, like, fuse them all together. So I guess he's, like, testing that. So he puts in a baboon and a cat. Oh, that would have been good. Yeah. And, I mean, you can still see it. It's in yeah. the deleted scenes. They did yeah. shoot it. Um, and so the creature that comes out is, like, this fucked up looking, like, baboon, half baboon, half cat hybrid. It's got, like, a cat head sticking out of the house. Oh, so it's and different. it's, like, it's really, really horrifying yeah. looking. And it attacks him. And it wasn't so much the creature that upset people, but... <laughs> The the creature attacks him and he throws it off and then just beats the shit out of it like with an yeah. iron bar, and um, I think audiences thought well it's not so much the creature it's just that it makes him less sympathetic right it makes it weird. like because yeah. he's like beating this poor like yeah. helpless creature that he made to death yeah uh, so so they took it out that uh, fits though what he said he was yeah. saying the insects don't have any compassion. Yeah. So that would have been better to kind of make him just becoming he's becoming a monster becoming an insect. I mean, I think that it, I I don't know. Like I like I've seen the scene because you can yeah. see it on YouTube because it's on the Blu-ray and Did everything. Did it look good? The the the, the yeah, monkey? it looked cool actually. It wasn't big. It was right. kind of like bigger than cat size, but not as big as yeah. baboon size, which makes sense. I would have made it an even blend though, not just something mashed together. That would have been cooler, like a baboon thing with a cat face and cat ears and claws. I would have made a total totally new animal because that yeah. would support what he's talking about. Gene splicing is what he's talking about. Yeah. So, if it did that, if it just mashed them together physically, then that means the the, the transporter wouldn't have, wouldn't have worked. 
to blend him and somebody else. It just would have mashed them together. But I think by that point, he was like so far gone that he was just like, he as, soon as, as soon as he found out she was pregnant, he's okay. like, oh, well, maybe... Right. Maybe that'll. I don't think he really thought it was gonna work. Okay. I mean, you know what I mean. He was kind of like getting to the point where he was just trying to like hang on to the last shred of his humanity, but it was just like slipping away when from him. When you mash a cat and a baboon together, is it a caboon? It's a caboon. It's a caboon. Yeah. <laughs> or a yeah. bad cat. <laughs> yeah. Bad cat. Bad cat. Bad cat. But yeah, so that was taken out because, uh, like I said, they thought it made him less sympathetic, which you know I can see that. Um, the other scene that was taken out, it's interesting too, because this movie ends, it's like, I don't feel bad about spoiling this because everybody has seen this fucking movie. Wow. Even if you haven't seen it, you know the story yeah. of it. Like, you know, you know he, what happens. He invents a teleporter. The title, to fly the title there. alone. The it title. turns him into a half man, <laughs> half life. I think yeah. in the original screenplay that, 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 uh, Pogue wrote. Um, I think he basically turned, it was still a tra like a gradual transformation, but he turned into more like a man-sized fly. Yeah. Whereas David Cronenberg wanted something that looked more, I guess like realistic and more like the, the progression of an actual disease. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so he could kind of use that as a metaphor for like disease or like the aging process. Yeah. You Towards know? the end though, he did look like a man-sized fly. He did he kind of, yeah. yeah. They just wanted like more of a human look to him, and they yeah. wanted him to still have like kind of expressive eyes. So you could yeah. still see that he was in there. Yeah, it was like a metamorphosis. The fly was inside of him, remember? And yeah. And everything fell off like a shell. Yeah, once she like reached yeah. up and pulled his yeah. jaw off, and then it all just like cracked open. So he was kind of like becoming a cocoon. Yeah, it was like that kind of thing, which I think was actually like a good way to go. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, so the end of this, where basically he uh, he has enough humanity left to kind of like lift the the gun up, the rifle up, and like put it to his head, like you know, shoot me, put me out of my misery, and she doesn't yeah. want to do it, but then she does finally do it, and then it ends. I actually really liked the way it just ended abruptly like that. You know what I mean? Uh, but they did actually shoot a bunch of different kind of codas to the, you know, little endings to it. But it's just when they showed them to different audiences, everybody was like, no, they didn't really like it. Um, I think they liked the impact more of them, of her just like killing him and putting him out of his misery. And then it was the end because some of the, some of the ones they did, like one of the um, endings that they shot was her back in bed with her dick bag uh, ex-boyfriend. So they got back together, which people did not like at all. Um, and she was having a dream, or you didn't know it was a dream at first, but she had a dream that she gave birth to a baby and it was normal, but then it grew like butterfly wings. Yeah. Which, I don't know. Like, I've seen that ending too, and I'm like, that looks a little silly to me. Yeah. And uh, Cronenberg didn't really like it either, and he's just like, mm, no, we're not doing that. Just but, ending it is a lot like the way the thing ended. That's what I'm saying. So I think that had yeah. a lot more impact. Yeah. And that was kind of like, you know, Cronenberg was like, you know, we shot all these different endings and stuff and we tested the different ones with audiences. But he's like, I didn't really like any of them because he's like, I really liked that impact of just like him being dead. And then like the end, it's like they did, it didn't really seem like it took away, you know, it kind of like deflated a lot of the emotional resonance of that moment when you just had this, oh, it's kind of a happy ending, like where she ends up back with this asshole ex-boyfriend of hers. But that's another thing. This is really the only, and I don't, I don't even know if I'd call this a criticism. Maybe the only slight criticism I have of this is that her ex-boyfriend, who's also the editor, her editor, right, like at the magazine she works at, is a giant gaping anus. Um, you know what I mean? Like through the first half of this movie. I mean, he's like not even disguising it. He's like, he might as well, he's just like a giant fucking tool. And for him to... I, I like I like that he had some character growth in the sense that he almost he kind of goes on to become a hero like to help her and stuff. Um, I think it happened a little bit too quickly. He didn't I, have a choice. I mean I yeah and honestly like but I was thinking about it when I was watching it because like I said I'm a writer and I think about yeah. these things so I was kind of like well I guess you could justify it by saying well he had an ulterior motive because he wanted her back. And he's like, oh, your boyfriend's turning into a fly creature? Well, just let me help you out with that. Maybe we can, like, kill him and stuff. So he was kind of like, so maybe you could argue that he's still kind of a dick because he had, like, ulterior motives for helping her. Cost him a hand, though. And a foot. And a foot, that's right. 
I love that scene, honestly, because yeah. that guy was, like, such a shit, and then at the end, like, I was like, I don't care if you're, like, turning around now and, like, trying to be a better person. It's like... Well, I guess you could say... I guess you <laughs> when Jeff Goldblum, like, barfed on his ankle yeah. and it's like his foot came off. I, I guess they were just trying to say that at least he was a human being. Yeah, and... The like, fly didn't have any compassion once. Yeah, that's fly. what I was going to say, is yeah. that, in a way, like, I can see, because it's almost kind of like an inversion, yeah. because Jeff Goldblum's character, Seth, Br Seth Brundle, yeah. it's like he started out as, like, a really nice, like, sensitive dude, yeah. and then, like, at, after he went through and got the fly DNA, he became, yeah. like, a raging jackwad. And it went the other way. With and the then other it guy. went the other way, and then the other way started out as a raging jackwad, and then, so yeah. it was, like, an inversion of character, yeah, which, like had, I said... He had to suffer to atone. He had to put his ass on the line and lose a hand and a foot. Foot, but then you know he was a human yeah yeah but a human wouldn't let wouldn't let that go down a fly would yeah that's what they got because because fly don't give a fly fuck. Don't give a shit fly's a, damn, <laughs> fly's a damn robot yeah but yeah so that's the only thing but like i said i've seen a couple of people say that chris but if you look at it in that light because it's weird i was watched like i said i've seen this movie a bunch of times and when I was watching it again last night, I was like, wow, that movie seems really short. I guess it's just because one thing I noticed, too, about this time of watching it, this movie is very efficient. There's not a single scene in there that is wasted. Yeah. Um, it just kind of like it gets right into the very first scene is uh, Seth meeting Veronica at that party. And he just immediately says, I'm working on something that will save the world or, you know, change the world. And like then they just immediately get into it. So like every single thing is kind of building up to this thing. And like I said, there's nothing that's wasted. It doesn't meander. It's just, you know, I don't even remember like what the running time is, but it's because I was sitting there going, man, that just flew by. You know what I mean? Well, now that you mention it, man, it's just, it's a lot like the thing. Yeah. Where it's, it, it's, it draws you in. It's very kind of direct. It's, it's situational. It's showing you one thing after another. There's no, like I said, no meandering. The edit's real tight. It's not the same kind of setting. You know what I mean? Like the things happening in, in the Arc, you know, down in Antarctica, and it looks like you're in the Antarctica. It, it is really impressive, you know, uh, what Carpenter did. This one is different. It's in an, in, a, in an urban setting, mostly happening in apartments and stuff, and laboratories, and you know. Uh, but uh, and his laboratory was in his apartment, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and it, and it didn't even have an elevator, did it? That apartment, they had to walk upstairs. Yeah, it was stairs. So guess, yeah, because remember he was carrying that girl yeah. like up the stairs. Yeah. Tawny was so, that character's name. <laughs> but it does make you feel like you're seeing it happen, and you know what I mean. Like you're there. It does feel. It is does feel grounded in reality. Yeah. Um, it does have that '80s style, late '80s style. Um, it looks good. It looks real good, and it's just a um, straightforward storytelling that keeps you in there. Keeps you keeps you uh, grounded in it. And honestly, I think that um, Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis, who were a couple in real life at the time, uh, yeah. actually, which I had forgotten about. Real good acting, yeah. Um, that, that really lends this a, a real emotional impact that a lot of horror movies don't have. Well, you can see what happened to the, to, to the scientist that, that Goldberg's playing, Goldblum's playing. You're, 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 you're kind of like... Uh, you're watching. You're going, man. What would that? What would that be like if that was happening to me? You know what I yeah, mean? it's a tragedy. You're is gonna, what it, yeah. it's like a tragic story. Yeah. You can identify with it. You're like, oh man, that would suck. You know, he's vomiting on the fucking donuts. Fucking to d dissolve them and lap them back up. You do it in front of people. Goes, oh yeah, that's and he's gross, isn't it? He's trying yeah. to make light of it. Yeah, but yeah, he's ma he's trying. He's making light of it because he's terrified. Yeah, and then he's got a this hope that he's going to be able to fix himself or that it's going to be okay. You know, the, oh, I'm turning into something better. Yeah, no, you turn into a fly. That's turning what I'm saying. I think at first, because <laughs> when he first goes through, like before he realizes that yeah. there was a fly in there, um, and he comes out, like you said, he's doing like gymnastics and stuff, and he's just like, oh my God, this is so awesome and stuff. But yeah. then like little things start, like he's in the coffee shop with, with yeah. Veronica, and he's like, keeps putting more and more sugar in there, and she's yeah. like, uh, hey, you want some coffee with he sugar right starts there? And sweating out all he's like fucking, coking out. Yeah. <laughs> starts sweating out all this milky grease and fucking, you know, he's just going through all these damn hormonal changes. I don't know what that's like. But he's got all these <laughs> hormonal changes. And fucking, he just starts becoming real aggressive, feeling good, and wanting to fuck people up, and wanting to go after women, and he's starting to become an animal, you know. And he gets more and more insect-like as he goes. So, 
and that's what it, that's what a, a fly would be. It would be like a robot, but it would have primitive emotions and drives. It just run, fight, breed, you know, lay eggs, just real simple shit. This is great, you know. Oh, I love flying around. Wee. Look at this turd. <laughs> this is a fantastic. Look, fan <laughs> look at this. Is a fantastic turd. Oh, look at this. Got a dead dog. This is great. You know, I'm sure everything's great when you're a fly. You know. Oh, it's got me. Oh hell. Oh, <laughs> fly gets eaten by something, and that's that's their whole life. You know. Yeah. It, it, For like however many three yeah, days or however long. A couple it is. weeks. I think they live a couple weeks. <laughs> I don't know how long. But they is. probably just think it's great, and you know that's that's. Yeah, they don't know any better. No, real positive shit. <laughs> We're flying around, dude. Yeah, it's awesome. Look at the turds. <laughs> smell them. Smell them a mile away. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> but that's the thing. I kind of feel like that's what's so great about it. I mean, Jeff Goldblum is so fucking great in this. And the two of them are just great in this. And they play off each other so well. But it's kind of like, I think the best thing about his performance is that I think even from the beginning, he suspects that something went wrong. But he is so trying to convince himself that this was a good thing that yeah. you know he would you know what i mean that he's just like willing to just like this is so awesome this is so awesome and then yeah. you know then he tries to like make her go in it and she's like fuck no yeah. dude it's like because she can already see like little things that are different about him so she knows that something went wrong well, he felt good instantly when he came out of there yeah but like i said i think he didn't know what happened though i think like just like yeah. very very soon after he came out he started to sus i don't think he knew what it was but i think he started to suspect that Some something was the matter yeah. Um, because he knew that he was different, but he was kind of like in denial, and like yeah. trying to, you know, trying to make himself feel, but oh, this is a good thing. I thought about this shit before. If you had a teleporter like that, that would disassemble all your molecules and then reassemble, reassemble you perfectly, would that be you? I don't think it would be. Well, like I said, I watching this, I know this is gonna, this is weird, but it's like watching this made me kind of want to watch um, that fucking the the Prestige, yeah. Because that tackles that exact same question, yeah, I don't think it would be. where you know it's it it's he, they invented a teleporter, Nikola yeah. Tesla invents a teleporter in that, right. and um, you know, and it makes essentially a clone of a you, clone, right. and so he just had to keep killing the clone like yeah. every time he did the trick yeah. <laughs> because it was a different person. That's what I think it would be. It probably would, which it is would like kill you, you would vanish. And then it would make a, a, an exact replica that would feel like it was you. It wouldn't be you though. It would be a, it would be like a clone of you, a perfect replica. It would not be you though. Yeah. Your consciousness wouldn't be in it. It's kind of like I I kind of feel like that concept is sort of hinted at in here with yeah. the stake. Right. Because remember when they put because he can't figure out like at first he can't figure out why I can't why he can't transport like living tissue only yeah. inanimate objects and then he has the idea to like put a stake through there. Yeah. And then, like, in two pieces, and then he cooks it, and the one tastes fine, yeah. the, you know, the one that didn't go through, obviously, but then the other one, she said it tastes synthetic, right. almost like the machine made a copy of yeah. it and didn't really know how to make, you see, know what I mean? See, essentially, your data. Yeah. You can just reduce a person to data and then use the data to take molecules and put, put you back together. But the thing is, is if you have that data, you could put more than one of you back together. Uh -huh. So you could disintegrate one, and if you had the raw materials, build four. What, are there going to be four of you? No. No, no one needs no, more of me. No, no, sure. no not, <laughs> they'll all think that they're you, but then, uh, no, they're not you. They're fucking copies. And they might, they're going to be alive. They'll probably have their own consciousness, but it's not your consciousness. Because if you could just scan a person and make a copy out of raw material... You would see a copy of you, so that would not be you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if that thing killed you, you would die. Yeah. There'd be a, and another one would take your place. That would be freaky. Yeah. So honestly, this whole teleportation shit, no, nah. no thanks. Like I said, I like I like that nah. the movie The Prestige like went into that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like showed what that would actually like yeah. be like if yeah, somebody did invent it. one. I'm not buying that. Shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anything that does like what the Star Trek transporter does kills you. Yeah, so it's like every single time yeah. they go through that, Kirk gets killed. <laughs> another Kirk pops up. It's not the same Kirk. It's not the same Kirk. It's a cop. <laughs> and they were worried. As far as the Star Trek lore, they were worried about that, but they had proved that, no, it's not. I ain't buying that either. No. <laughs> that, was that, a, that was some hand wavy kind that, of shit. That would kill you. No, no, no. It's, it's the same. It's the same yeah. Kirk. Because you wouldn't even have to transport it when you think about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could just... Scan one and make a copy somewhere else and then kill this one and let, let that one live. 
and that's transportation. You, it, yeah. It, you know, you could call that transportation. It wouldn't be. It'd be murder. Yeah, because you're not transporting. You're not transporting anybody. That one didn't go right. anywhere. <laughs> right. Right. Well, free-flowing molecules are not conscious. They're not live. As soon as you come apart into molecules, you've been fucking vaporized. Yeah. You're dead. Putting it back together, no, I, I ain't buying that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, there's no reason to move those molecules because those molecules can be had on the other end. You can just assemble them over there with the ones you got We're over there. We're just going to build another one. Just build another one. Right. So it's we not, don't need it's, that one. Fuck that it's one. It's not realistic. It's not efficient to transport those molecules across space and reassemble them. That's a waste of energy. There's yeah, Because no, it's not going to assemble you. It's gonna, <laughs> you. You've been vaporized. <laughs> they can fucking play word games all they want. <laughs> Ross knows. <laughs> I know what life is. No, I, I agree with you. I yeah. Agree with you. But, uh, yeah, so like I said, because this, when this came out, amazingly, even uh, critics and stuff like that that didn't normally like horror movies fucking loved this shit because they were yeah. just kind of like, this is, and like I said, as disgusting and over the top as the effects are and everything. Well, it had a good script. It had a good story. Yeah, it had a good story. It had good characters, yeah. good acting. Yeah. Um, actually, even in 1986, they were talking about uh, maybe, you know, Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum like being not nominated for Oscars, which of course they were not because it's a horror movie. But uh, the guy that did the uh, effects did get uh, an Academy Award yeah. for this, uh, and rightfully so because the effects in this still look revolting to this day. Um, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, so like I said, I was also going to say when this came out in 1986, a lot of people saw it as, because that was kind of like the height of the AIDS epidemic, so a lot of people saw it as like a metaphor for AIDS. And they asked David Cronenberg about that, and he's like, well, yeah, if you've experienced that, then yeah, you can totally see it like that. He's like, I kind of meant it more as like a universal like disease or aging. Yeah. But uh, he's like, yeah, it could totally be AIDS because, you know, anything that's like a degenerative disease, he's like cancer, you know, or just the aging process or whatever. That was uh, mostly what he wanted to do, something more like general. Now, as most people know, there was a sequel to this, The Fly 2. The Fly 2 never, so, never saw it. Probably Eric terrible. Stoltz. It's not bad. Not it bad. was actually directed by the guy who did the special effects on okay. the first film. Um, so... And all, with all of that entails, in that it's a special effects extravaganza, like a showcase. Which, which maybe we should see it. Nothing wrong with I've seen it, like, several yeah. times. Uh, they showed it on cable a lot back in the old so days. Is it worth seeing? Yeah, it's basically Eric Stoltz plays uh, their Seth and Veronica's son, okay. Martin. All right. Uh, and he's kind of, like, carrying on the work, sort of. So like he's not par fly, then? Uh, it goes that it way. Goes in that way, okay. Because I mean, you know, right. yeah, th right. that's the yeah. He was born right. normal, yeah, I but see I guess it then, I guess I can't remember if he tr like. I guess he transports himself too, just like his dad. Even though he's so, he's yeah. like, I don't know. He did, he didn't learn from his dad's mistakes, I guess. But uh, but yeah, so a similar kind of thing happens to him. Like I said, it's not a bad movie, but it's not nearly as awesome as the first one. Um, interestingly, David Cronenberg himself, who is not a big fan of like making sequels of things had actually written a treatment for... He's like, it's not exactly a sequel, but it's kind of like in the same vein. Like, it is about the telepods, and it is, like, about that. Um, but he just never... And he actually wanted to make it, but he's like, well, the studio, like, wanted it to be low budget, and, like, the concept that I had needed a bigger budget, and they didn't want to pay for it. And so it kind of just, like, went back and forth. And Jeff Goldblum, even though he died in the first one, <laughs> spoiler alert, um... He actually said, well, if they if he made another one, if Cronenberg made another one, I would totally do it because he's like, I really, really liked working with David Cronenberg. Oh, that also reminds me, too, the the famous dream sequence where Gina Davis gives birth to a big maggot. And um, if you didn't know, that is actually David Cronenberg being the obstetrician. Um, he actually didn't really want to do that. He's like, I don't usually, he, he'll act in other people's movies. He pulled a Stephen King. He doesn't, he, well, <laughs> yeah, he'll act in other people's movies, yeah. but he doesn't like, cause he was in, um, Nightbreed, I think, that Clive Barker movie, uh, played like the villain in that. But, uh, he's like, I don't really like to do cameos in my own movies, but Gina Davis asked him to be the obstetrician. Like in that scene, she's like, because she felt uncomfortable, like with another yeah. actor being there, yeah. <laughs> like it, like in between her legs, like with the stirrups and everything. So she asked him to do it. So he said he would do it. So I just thought that was like kind of funny. Uh, they've also done. So, yeah. So Cronenberg, he said that he does have a treatment for a sort of sequel. He's like, it's kind of a lateral sequel in that it's a similar theme and like a similar story with like telepods transformation stuff like that but it's not like a a direct sequel 
but I don't know if it's ever going to get made, uh, so I don't know. They did, so so they have made one sequel, which, like I said, was okay. I remember it being okay. Um, you know, it's not great, but it wasn't terrible. I bet you a Cronenberg flick like that coming out now would do pretty good. It probably would, and, yeah. uh, you know, honestly, because he kind of moved away from horror, uh, in his, his, you know, because his more recent films, well, recent, now that they were a long time ago, but he'd, he's kind of gone more into, like, a like a violent crime thriller direction, yeah. like, you know, Eastern Promises and stuff, which are, uh, you know, amazing movies, but they're not, like, straight-up horror movies. Um, but, you know, and his son, uh, you know, Brandon, is obviously doing uh, arty horror movies, yeah. too, like, just, which are also awesome. They were good from what we're saying. Well, yeah, so we, far. yeah, we've, uh, I've seen both of them, yeah. like, both of the ones that he's made so far, and they're both really good. But, uh, yeah, so I think they did do a continuation, like, uh, a graphic novel or something like that. Oh, I think back in 2008, David Cronenberg did an opera based on the fly <laughs> i've seen like ske- and it actually looked kind of cool i mean you know what i mean it's you know what i mean um but i don't know i, I i've seen like clips of it like on youtube and stuff and it looks kind of cool but that's i just thought that was really funny that he made it into an opera but uh yeah so anything else we need to say about the fly no nah, it's good enough. like i said it's on hulu uh it's a fucking classic if you yeah. haven't seen it get your ass over there i mean even people that haven't seen it like i said everybody knows the story because it's been parodied so many times like with person with a fly head and shit like that but yeah hey, go what it's good yeah you want to see this one and the thing this make a good double feature yeah. with the thing, actually, yeah. now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, definitely see it if you haven't. It's a classic. One of the best horror films of the 1980s, easily. Yeah. Uh, you know, so yeah, go check it out. And that will do it for this movie retrospective. We will see you guys on the next one. Bye.